there was quite a few questions that I had when I was first attending Coachella that I feel like I didn't really find the answers easily to. So in this video, I really will just be going through everything that I could possibly think of, of questions that I had, uh, or just things that I've learned that I think is really going to be helpful for you. So congrats on going as your first year. Whoop, whoop. Um, I kind of jotted this down from like, preparation all the way to like actually going and like leaving so everything is kind of in like chronological order so if there's anything in particular looking for you can definitely like skip to this video to like a point that uh, of questions that you have so I remember too when the Coachella setlist first drops um sometimes you already have your tickets or you just had bought your tickets around then uh I do love to search new artists that are on that list I will say though, uh, what I've learned from previous years is just pick a couple people. A lot of times what ended up happening for me is I picked a ton of artists that I wanted to see. And then when it came down to it, I had to like pick and choose people. And normally the way that it's set up in the little boxes, I'll pull it up, um, is normally by like the smallest name to biggest name is in somewhat of an order of how the day is gonna go. So some of the people next to each other in that line will also end up be playing at similar stages at the same time. Um, I remember I always really liked the artists um, that play it like Gobi and some of the smaller stages. And so I found that a lot of them ended up playing at the same time. So pick and choose. I think when you're uh, picking and making playlists for new music, um, just pick a couple artists, the ones that you like the most, because you can't, you could potentially see everybody, but I remember a couple times I had to pick and choose people, which wasn't the most fun. Uh, VIP versus general admission, I would say uh, I've only gone to general admission and I don't think the perks for the VIP uh, it's, it's nice if you wanted to go for it, but I don't think you're missing a ton if you just did GA. There are just a couple uh, areas that are off to the side for VIP. Um, and then they do get, um, in some venues, they have a section where they get a little bit closer. Um, I would say, though, you can still, like, be front um, or be really close without being GA. So I think it's it's nice. And if you want to, sure, because the price difference is so significant, I think GA is just fine. Uh, so it's kind of in short what I would say about that. For me personally, I, the first year I went, ended up getting like a professional like spray tan, uh, which was really nice. And it was, you know, really cute, but it ended up not lasting. That was the year I car camped as well. And it ended up not lasting past that like day zero. So it wasn't worth it for me to go through that. And I have since not done that. Uh, but I did end up getting this new you know like micro mist spray that works really well and then you can like reapply in certain spots it's just a really hot festival and you sweat a lot I'm always like pouring water on myself and things like that so I would say if you're thinking about doing a spray tan maybe you're on a budget and you're not sure I would really recommend um the Neutrogena even not I mean it's my go-to now for any hot weather occasion and every Coachella I've gone to uh it's been really awesome to use now you're in the valley you got there hi girl it's hot we know oh my god uh, and so I think another question is, um, do you, should you get a ride or should you drive into the venue? This doesn't apply towards people who are car camping. Uh, this would just be if you drove down or staying somewhere and are deciding if you should drive or Uber into, uh, the venue, anything like that. I would recommend, uh, if you did drive to just drive, <laughs> bring a caffeine energy drink and some snacks for after the show to get you through like the drive home. But I remember looking at Uber rides last year, I think I have just screenshotted it, of how much it was at 1 a.m. and it was like $100. And we ended up, our group was too big, so it just didn't make sense. But if you're staying at a hotel or anything like that, a lot of times they will have uh, hotel shuttles, which is awesome. So utilize those if you can. If you're debating if it's worth doing an Uber, uh, we ended up saying it wasn't worth it. And I stick with that because I think it just would have been too expensive. Also for the Uber, it was like 15 miles and it was like $100. Heard a lot of people who were trying to get Ubers and then like they canceled and all this stuff. So I would say just drive. Um, I do have some more notes on the driving situation as we get through this video, but I'm trying to go in like somewhat of an order. Also, this was something that I saw somebody do and I think it's really smart. Uh, they put as their screensaver, uh, they had a little note in there of being like, this person's in my party if my phone gets lost with their phone number to be able to get a hold of it. I think that's really great just for safety precautions for the weekend. If you happen to lose your phone and somebody finds it, anything like that, obviously it wouldn't help if it's dead. But otherwise, if you were to lose your phone, I think it's a great thing to do just in like worst case scenario. Uh, Cause I did have somebody that I knew who like lost their phone last year and that really sucks. So sometimes, you know, if somebody finds it, I feel like if I found a phone and there was a phone number on it, I would try and contact them. So that's something that you can do um, just as like a safety precaution. I thought that was really awesome and like a really smart idea. Cell service sucks at the venue. Um, so before we would get there, we would screenshot everybody who was um, all the sets for that day and then also um, have a screenshot of the map of the venue. That was a game changer and a lifesaver. I was the only one that did that in my group last year. And literally we 
were able like people were like oh my apps aren't loading like all this stuff whatever so it came in handy so i'd say screenshot the day stuff so you can look through it if you're wanting to see some artists that are around like three or four or anything earlier than that i would say leave early um that's especially if you're driving into the venue it took us an hour and a half to two hours to get um, into the parking lot and then like through the uh, security and then like walking into the venue. So I would say uh, do that. We missed uh, a couple people at three or four was uh it was like role model and like olivia o'brien stuff like that last year which sucked so if we wanted to be there at three i would say let's leave at one um so hopefully if like we leave a little late or like you know we want to grab some food beforehand whatever we'll actually be at the stage before the show starts i found photos from years prior of like when we left when we got there um i'll tell you those real quick so um on day one we left at 3 30 and we didn't get into the venue till five so that's like actually like passes like we're looking at the ferris wheel at five um the second day we left at 2 30 we didn't get there till 3 30 that one wasn't as bad we found better parking that day and went a different direction um that also helps like figure out how the parking goes day one's always going to be a mess so if there's anybody important you want to see get there significantly early it's going to sound crazy but once you're actually there like i couldn't believe we literally missed i think his show was at like four thirty or something and i thought we had enough time and we didn't so that uh and it was my birthday so that did kind of suck for me but um and then the third day was the longest we uh left at 3 30 we didn't get there till 5 30 i do know we went and got food for a little bit there so i would say probably it was an hour and a half of getting in but i was kind of surprised by that as well and also too there's a lot of steps before you actually get into the venue like you the parking just getting into the parking lot you sit in car lines on the streets for like a long time and then once you get in you park um and then you have to like walk a little bit it's not too far i would say like a mile a mile and a half maybe um uh, but then like i mean that adds time though to uh where you're trying to be and especially too if you're trying to be at like main stage or something that's like the furthest you could possibly be so if you're interested in drinking and saving some money uh my friends so i was the dd predominantly last year and so but my friends still want to drink so they ended up um drinking at the house but because it took us so long to get there like it wasn't fun or like they were already like not feeling it once we got there and like if anything feeling bad so uh it ended up being better to wait till we got into the parking lot like parked the car um everybody you know took a couple shots or drank something um and then walked into the venue um because drinks there are expensive and it's a time sucker like it just takes up so much time um because you have to go in like this certain area so if your group is like not everyone's 21 you have to like wait outside i had to do that one year and then um last year the lines are crazy and it is expensive and you can't take the alcohol out of that area so you have to drink it and finish it in that area so i just think it is best if you um i mean if you want to do that by all means but if you're trying to get to a show at a certain time but still want to be fun and not spend all your money on drinks um i would recommend doing that because then it'll kind of hit you as you're getting into uh the venue which is you know convenient so uh, I would also say once you get into the venue, find a spot that you want to be your meetup spot. Uh, we had a couple different spots throughout of like this time we'll meet here. Uh, cell service is horrendous once you get in there. I think one out of like the six of us actually had cell reception. So if that shows you. Uh, so I wasn't getting any messages really at all. Uh, and so it is really great to find a spot and like be there and be like we're going to meet right here at this time uh, to find each other again because otherwise it's going to be a disaster. You can always meet at the car but then you never know like where anybody's at. So that really helped us for spending. Uh, you could probably budget around like 30 to $50 a day for food um, and expenses. I would say like the carousel is fun to do. That's like the only thing that costs money of like activities that I really like to do. Uh, the color wheel is free. And then, yeah, it would be probably in that budget. Um, if you're from like around the California area, the prices for food isn't too crazy. I think if you're coming from another state, uh, you'll definitely notice the prices are more expensive, but it's not bad. Um, I think you can do less than $30 if you wanted, especially if you like eat more in the morning, um, get some stuff like right before, um, or just like also wait till you like get home. You definitely can, but you'll definitely probably want a meal and some snacks in that time. I would recommend going to merch on the first day if you're interested in that. It is a long line and it'll take you a second, but you do get less options the longer you wait. Calling all contact users. Um, 
if you have contacts bring an extra pair in your bag bring eye drops there's normally one of the days that are super windy if not all of them but one of them was so bad for me it literally like <laughs> um i had to like change contacts i was using eye drops like crazy i couldn't see half the day so i would really recommend bringing an extra pair there also is like a standalone bathroom there's one on the whole polo field so that one actually has like sinks and mirrors and stuff that you can go in and like mess with your eye and your um your business if that happens i also would recommend having sunglasses that like wrap around more do a wrap around a wrap around uh anyways that was off topic but um i had one i'll insert a picture but i had one that like went all the way around that was great to like keep out dust and things like that so if you have glasses the one year i went and i had my glasses and it was fine i didn't have any issues but my friend did who had contacts so if you have contacts uh you know sunglasses and just bring stuff for extra precaution because more likely than not you'll need it so what happens if you want to see a show at the main stage but then the other show you want to see is on the other side of the venue how far is everything um honestly you can get to everything pretty quickly i would say like five to ten minutes um the latest i it's more just like getting through people so certain times especially when it gets darker it is a little bit harder to navigate we were under the impression the first time that we went that like we were gonna have to pick between one or two shows that were around the same time we ended up being able to like finish one show and actually like see the half of the other show like for example we one day uh we we're seeing an artist at the sahara which is the one like near the front of the entrance and then somebody else we wanted to see was performing like 20 minutes later at um main stage and we thought we weren't going to be able to make it based on like what other people had told us uh but we did we didn't see the whole show i think the show started like one show started before the other one ended kind of thing so we didn't see the whole show but we saw like I would say like 25 minutes of it or something and we thought we weren't even going to see it all together so you definitely can there are water stations everywhere so it is great to actually bring your own water bottle and you can fill up at any time or bring one of those like uh they're called like bladder bags or something that you can just stick into your own backpack or just camel packs or whatever just a water bottle in general uh those are really great the years prior they had like flags so you could kind of see them from a distance that wasn't the case last year and they were harder to find but i don't know that might also been because it was weekend one and sometimes there are some hiccups for that so potentially weekend two is better that's something that does happen if you are weekend two you kind of get a smoother situation because some of the kinks are figured out weekend one but you can also water is like one to two dollars basically everywhere and sometimes it shows they do give it to you as well but it was nice to have water on you at all times because it is super hot and you do need to hydrate i also saw some questions on how, how long you should um get to a show if you want to get a decent spot for like the headliner so last year for one of the shows they were supposed to start at 11 35 we ended up getting there around nine i'll insert kind of where i was at and we were pretty close so that's what we did i also had um some friends who uh their whole goal was to be like at the front the whole day or, or for like the main stage so they literally got there at like noon and stayed at barricade the whole day which is kind of insane uh so if you want to get like front you have to be there like right as the day goes and that'll be the main stage will probably be the only one that you'll actually see uh i don't know if i'd want to do that though because i did hear like I don't know like bathroom situation that kind of stuff did not sound fun to me sometimes uh it worked out where like there was an artist we liked that went on before and then like when that show ends a lot of people leave and you can kind of move forward uh but yeah so we were there at nine and then some of our other friends ended up getting some food beforehand and we're like I mean I couldn't see them but they were like a bit behind us uh and I think they were like there an hour and a half earlier like an hour so yeah the longer you wait the further back you'll be um and sometimes too actually one of the days we ended up being like all the way in the back and just sitting in the grass because you can kind of see it really nicely from like a distance that's also a fun experience as well if you're not too into the artist or if you are looking to leave a little bit early that's also a cool view um, and very comfortable if your feet hurt. At the end of the night, if you are driving, you're trying to avoid as much traffic as possible, uh, you will need to leave before the headliner ends. I would say anywhere from um, 20 to 45 minutes before they, they're over uh, to actually get out of the parking lot at a decent time. Uh, that's what we did one of the nights and it did make our journey home a little bit quicker you no matter what will hit a bit of traffic uh, I honestly because I'm there to see shows and enjoy that I don't really like leaving early I just understand that it's going to take us upwards of two hours to get out of that parking lot which is exhausting and terrible but like it is what it is and that's why I think like bring those snacks bring some caffeine and it's not too terrible or bring something fun to do in the car or a game or something I don't know um or pillows or blankets for all the other passengers kind of part of the experience I would say but if you are trying to avoid some of that and you don't care too much about the clothes on um, the headliner then yeah definitely like leave a little bit early if you want to know for reference the first night we left the venue at 2 a.m which was a little bit late I think we like stayed we stayed past the show 
uh and then like got a little food truck after well not food truck but there's like i don't normally eat meat and i had well that's a lie but and they had like hot dog stands like as you were leaving and i was like mm, i'm so hungry right now and i had to drive so i was like i need to like nourish and i had one and i swear to this day it was the best hot dog i've ever had so i do look forward to having another one <laughs> soon <laughs> Um, but anyways, so we left, um, at, we were in the car by, like, 2 uh, a.m.-ish, and we didn't get home till around 3.30, so that was, uh, not fun, and we only were, like, 30 minutes away. Um, once you get actually out of the venue, like, the parking lot, it's not as bad, like, it takes a second to get out, but once you're, like, on your way, it's not terrible, it's just getting out sucks, and I think, too, um, their staff, like, they just didn't have a lot of staff le last year when I went, so potentially if you go weekend to it, will be better, uh, and potentially this year overall will just be better for you. Now we got the Monday blues, right? You had the best weekend ever, and now you're headed home. Uh, for traffic purposes, no matter what, you're gonna hit traffic. Um, I know for car camping people, you have a designated time to leave. I would say if you can put off leaving as long as possible, like stay in the area, maybe grab some food, do something like that, I would recommend that. We tried to leave as latest as we could last year. Uh, two of our friends had flights though, so um, we had to leave a little bit earlier. We left around four um, and we still hit quite a bit of traffic. So I would say add like an additional hour and a half of travel back to wherever you're going to get out of the valley. Um, so if you have a flight or anything like that, literally add like whatever it says it normally is and add an hour and a half just to make sure that you're there um, at a decent time. So that I think no matter what, I think if you left that night or even if you left like Tuesday, um, then that would be better if you have that option to do that. I think the traffic would be much lower, uh, but that was the situation. I would say it was worse earlier uh, when we had to leave because car camping, like they tell you when you have to leave and then it's like all of the people who are car camping are leaving right around the same time. Uh, so that is not that great. Uh, so I would say if you can put it off as long as possible, do it. It's going to be worth it because uh, I believe the drive last year wasn't as bad as years previously. I hope I answered a lot of questions you have. I also am, um, I have a couple other videos up about like what you should pack and uh, if you're car camping, everything that I learned from um, that experience from years past uh, and things like that. So if you're interested in any of those other videos, they will be on my channel. I believe um, I will have a playlist dedicated to that if you want to check it out. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this answered your questions. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Um, comment down below and I will get to it. So thank you so much. Have a great day or evening. Goodbye.